Well, people of God, I want you to give us some hearts and lights as we welcome the man of God, God's general apostle, Chuck Pierce of Glory of Zion from Texas. People of God, give the man of God hearts and lights wow, as you wow. come to our broadcast today. God bless you, sir. Welcome. Ben, thank you so much for allowing me to be with you. I look forward to our time together. We have corresponded many times back and forth, but we've not really been able to be face to face like this and discuss the things of the Lord. So all of you out there, I am so glad that you're joining with us. And we just want to enjoy what the Lord is doing right now. We want Ben to lead us and we want to uh, discuss the things that he would have us discuss today. Wow. Praise God. Well, it's a great honor, sir. Like I said, I mean, I'm like probably like a spiritual grandson in a sense, you know, a little whippersnapper, but we, we honor you. Uh, you know, we, we adore you, sir. And uh, just thank you for all that you've done in the prophetic apostolic in the nations. Amen. People of God, this is an international broadcast. So I want you to tap in. Where's our South Africa, our Aussies, our, our UK, our Canadian, our Filipino, Korea? Where's our family watching from? So continue to tap in. It's a great, great honor, sir. And we've been doing these prophetic convergences uh, because God is bringing forth a convergence in the spirit, a new breed, of course, as Paul Cain, Bob Jones, many others have prophesied about. But we've been doing these prophetic convergences because we want the real thing. And God is releasing the authentic, even in the midst of the fake and falsivity and the shaking and everything that's taken place. So uh, we're honored that you're here on this broadcast. And just as we're starting off the bat, what comes to your mind as we're talking about the prophetic convergence and a new breed in this hour? Well, first of all, I, I was just with Mike and Cindy Jacobs two days ago, and I, I told her, I said, I, the Lord has given me a word for uh, what he's doing with the prophets this year, with, uh, with uh, as he brings us together. See, because we've got to align ourselves. The prophetic works in several ways. It works individually. It works corporately. There is a corporate, always a corporate uh, uh ecclesia of that prophetic or a corporate gathering of that prophetic group. And then it works territorially, but it also works generationally. And in Isaiah uh, 59, it says, when three generations are prophesying what God has said together, arise, shine, your glory has come. So I don't think, I don't think any one generation can ever pull off exactly what God is looking for in the earth. I think there has to be an alignment and a convergence of three generations. That's so powerful. To con I mean, he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and uh, true generational wealth many times has to be three generations. And I mean, right now, even in the United States and cancel culture and media, it's trying to destroy the family unit. I mean, it's trying to disrupt, you know, uh, the definition of men and women, biological, according to the Bible, the word of God. And so there's so much attack on identity and against the family. The thing that we find is we, we lose sight of why God put us here, why he took us from the earth and made us, then blew into us his spirit and brought life into us. And now that uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ, we always come back, bring our spirit back to him because he is the father of our spirits. And because of that, he put us here to watch and to multiply. And I believe the enemy can't stand the thought of us watching and multiplying and entering into the prosperity that God has for us. So that's very important. Important. And yet I do know there's always a blending of generations that have to occur. And we see that all through the Word of God. We see that from one wineskin to another wineskin. We saw it from John the Baptist's wineskin. Only Philip and Andrew went with the Lord Jesus into the wineskin ahead. You're not going to always have a complete uh, crossing over of wineskins, but you do have to have some alignment that connects 
the last season with the next season. That's why Jesus went and got baptized. I mean, John even said, you know, you don't have to be baptized. You don't even fit this wineskin of repentance. And yet he said, unless I do this, I can't fulfill what I'm doing. And so I believe every time we align like this, there is some sort of fulfillment that is going on. Wow, that's so good. Every time we align like this, there's some sort of fulfillment. And I mean, I mean, it, it reminds me, sir, because, again, there's assignments and anointings released in every alignment. And and in a sense, we can't connect or converge with everybody at the same time. You know, we have to be. We have to be cautious. We have to be prayerful. It has to be of God. It has to be a divine appointment, not of the flesh, not witchcraft, coerced, forced. But, you know, it's like where uh, Mary and Elizabeth, the baby in her spirit, leapt, and there was a connection at the sound of the voice. So how important is it in midst of these shakings? Uh, I believe, Apostle, that there's going to be more shakings. Of course, the Bible says that. Jesus promises that. Uh but in the Gospels, but in midst of this new era that we are in right now with more and more shakings and unknowns, more viruses, more bacteria, more lockdowns, shutdowns, all that's going to be coming and happening even more. But even in midst of that, how important is it for us to be aligned and stay connected and aligned to the true vine? I think we have to uh, always represent the alignment that the Lord spoke to us from Ephesians chapter 4 because when he he descended and then he ascended and went and he seated while he was ascending he gave gifts to mankind and he gave us to be apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and evangelists healers you find this over in 1 Corinthians 12 healers and miracle workers and administrators Administrators. And so without that alignment, we cannot represent his government in the earth realm. And uh, then I think every generation has their, their alignment. And then when the three generations align together, all of a sudden you have a foundation that can't be shaken. And I think that's what the Lord's working on right now. Uh, I'm looking at uh, what this year is about. And I always go through the Word of God from start to finish. And this year, in the midst of this era, you mentioned an era. And I want, to, uh, I want you to lead us in talking about that. Uh, in this era, this is a war era that we are in these 10 years. Therefore, lots of conflict. Uh, but it's a war era because in this era that's called pay in Hebrew, that means the breath of God is blowing down from heaven. The voice of God is blowing down from heaven. The heavens are changing. I think a lot of people don't understand that. And in Psalms 102, the word of God says the heavens, you take off the heavens like an old garment. God is changing the heavenly realm during this time so that as he blows down through and into this first level of heaven down here, there's powers and principalities that are getting shaken. And then the structures of the cosmos down here that's built up with those that are aligned with those powers and principalities, they're getting shaken. And so we have to understand there's a whole lot of shaking going on right now, but it's going to be more. And then this year is the war for our divine recovery from, mm. say, even the last 70 years. Now, I've been in this a long time, so I can go all the way back to the 60s and, and remember things that started happening then. And yet we are in a divine recovery this year, but in this recovery, there is a war. And the best way to think about it, all of you listening out there, it's like with Gideon. The enemy had been stealing from him, from the people, the Midianites had been stealing for seven years. And all of a sudden, God said, I'm going to come down and I'm going to choose people who can take a stand in this war and the stealing of my harvest is going to stop. Now, I think that happens this year, and I feel like you are called to be a harvester. I see it all over you, and I say 
you're going to rise up and the stealing, you're going to also have incredible shrewd strategy over how to stop the enemy from robbing the harvest. And then we're going to go forth. Of course, Gideon had to tear down his father's altar Mm -hmm. and then build a new altar. So I've written several books in the last couple of years. One of them is Rekindling Your Altar Fire. We're going to have to have a new fire on the altar to accomplish this. My goodness, uh, Apostle, you just shared so much right there. But I want everybody to comment fire right now because there is fire on this broadcast. My goodness. And I received that word you just prophesied. Uh, and people of God, if you receive that word from the man of God, Apostle Chuck, just say amen. I receive it. Praise God. And we want you to continue to share this. Let's get the algorithms up. Let's get the numbers up in Jesus' name, because this is a word of words. Now, now, sir, you, you said so much right now. Of course, we are in the decade of the pay, uh, which is the mouth of the prophetic, the unction, uh, the prophets, the trumpets, the shofars. Amen. And even in midst of that, now we are in the new year, 5783. And of course, we're about to step into 2023. And of course, you know, you, you are a scholar of the Hebrew and uh, we honor that. But of course, you know, uh, number three is, uh, you know, it's it's the word gemel. And of course, gemel comes from the root word gemul. And gemul means recompense and the dealing of hands. So this truly, and of course, I'm just piggybacking off of what you shared, that harvest, that this year there is going to be reciprocity, repayment, the wages of either sin or the wages of righteousness are going to be released to the church. Whatever your hands have been on, whatever you've been sowing into, this is the year of the third year anointing, third day anointing of resurrection. Revelation. You want to look at it. That's an awesome way, Ben, to look at it. Third day anointing. We have entered in this new era. And this is what I don't know that people fully get. We we uh, live in uh, a moment. Uh, he predetermines our time and our place. He has chosen all of us to put us in this era. And in this era... There is a divine recovery that God is doing that has never been done to produce recompense from past issues. My uh, whole life is about recovery because my family had a lot and then they lost a lot. And uh, we went through a lot of tragedy. And when I was 18 and God visited me, he said, I can recover all you've lost. Therefore, we have to understand the laws of recoveries, the spiritual laws of recovery. We want to get into the laws of multiplication. We want to get into the laws of use, looking at what we have and seeing how to multiply them and bring them into the exploits for our future. So this becomes so important for us as we go forth. But you started this uh, uh, time we're having together by saying this is the double. This year, we have to be infused by a double portion anointing because that's the only type of anointing that can cast Jezebel down. Wow. So this year, you also have to know we have a great war with Jezebel. That is a governmental ruling force. That is not somebody in the church trying to control how things go. It is a governmental ruling force that must be brought down for all of us to see. And yet you can't do that without a double portion. We just sent a team up to Mount Carmel. Uh, yesterday, uh, and uh, that team was sent over there because of the elections that's going on in Israel. And they went from the top to the lowest in uh, Israel yesterday to, to decree that that anointing that began on Mount Carmel would not be thwarted at the gate and that we would come into a double portion anointing that could overthrow the structures that are trying to rule us in the future. This year becomes the key year for that. My goodness. Amen. Um, Apostle Chuck Pierce, I mean, 
uh, just two days ago, uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and he has a great name, Benjamin. I mean, you know, I wonder where he got that from. But, uh, I mean, he he just pretty much won the re-election as Prime Minister. And as I was reading the headlines, it says Netanyahu has a great comeback. I want everyone to say comeback. Come on. This is the season of the comeback and the payback. This is the season, the year. And of course, the reason why Netanyahu is so key, I mean, many, many, many people have said that he's probably the best prime minister that Israel has had since the nation's inception. And this is a season of the comeback where we're going to recover and regain all that was lost, taken, stolen. And the reason why Netanyahu is so important is because he's standing as a pillar, even as a friend of Trump and a friend of the free world, I believe. He is standing as a pillar in Israel and in the Middle East for the end times harvest. But, sir, I mean, what you shared is... War, yes, and that is so right, Ben. And in times of war, you've got to have a warrior leader. And without that, you're going to make some missteps. And that's really one of the very keys for the elections that are approaching here. Uh, I think God can work beyond uh, anything that we do. But I also think the word visitation is linked with how we vote. And it becomes very important how we're making a choice over what is going to be happening in America. Remember, I've written three books that uh, actually four that take us through uh, the year 2026. When God visited me in 1986, he showed me in 10 year increments through 2026 that has just played out to a T. And this year becomes the deciding choice year to determine where America is gonna end up in four years. And the nations are in this multitude, this valley of decision that's going on, and that means Jehoshaphat's valley. So that means we've got confederations coming against us, and we have to know God has a plan for us for breakthrough. Amen and amen. Absolutely. Uh, I've been telling the people, uh, Apostle, that, that this is the most important year, and this truly is the turnaround year. And of course, Gemel, you know, what it also stands for in the Hebrew is camels. So this is the year of the camels, the caravan of camels. We got to find the routes for the camels this year, Ben. I'm telling you, we've got to find new supply routes. Everyone's saying new supply routes because Haggai chapter two, which I, I love that verse because it talks about the greater glory, that the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. Amen. But in Haggai chapter 2, we read that there will be shaking in the nations. But guess what? In midst of the shakings, the attacks, the resistance, opposition within the nations and within all the structures that Apostle Chuck Pierce so, uh, you know, intricately shared. In midst of the shaking, there is a release of the finances, the gold, the silver is mine, says God. And then his house will be filled with the latter glory. So I believe in this season, and even as we're progressing, yes, there's going to be a lot of shaking. Many will not make it. Even certain ministries and voices will go home to be with the Lord, will, will not make it past the next season. However, in midst of that, we know that there is a transference of wealth, that the camels are coming, and the glory of God is going to be greater than ever before. We did during the 90s was we went to the entire Silk Road and we uh, wow. visited every nation along that Silk Road. And it, it becomes important for us to know there's new supply routes, but the war over supply this year so intensifies, especially take a nation like Taiwan. They're going to have to understand the warfare that is over them. And you have to remember that, uh, like Paul said, do you not know who's opposing you? See, it's not, it's not about nation versus nation. It's about kingdom versus kingdom. And uh, the enemy is trying to stop the kingdom of God from displaying the spirit of God in a way that the world will awaken to uh, have a new awakening to the spirit of God. And that becomes important. And I also want to go back to that thing. 
let's talk about the double portion. Let's talk about Elisha and Elijah. Let's talk about what I'm seeing, why God is doing things like this broadcast. That's why the Lord had me do it. I, I have spoken many times on the double portion, but one of the word God gave me for this year concerning the alignment of prophets comes from uh, a fee, uh, 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 2 Kings chapter 4, verse uh, 38. Elisha came back to Gilgal during a famine in the land. Well, we're not in real good shape right now. And so this really began to speak to me. The sons of the prophets were sitting before him, and he said to his servant, now this is Elisha, he said, put on the large pot and cook stew for the sons of the prophets. In other words, let's cook a meal for the new prophets that are rising up. And I really believe this is important with the both of us being here. It's one of the reasons I knew I needed to establish a time to be with you. Uh, Let's cook a meal for these new prophets that are coming, the sons of the prophets. Then one of them went out into the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine gathered from it and gathered from it a lap full of wild gourds and came and cut them up into the pot of stew, although they did not know what they were. Now, one of the things that the older prophets and those are that have gone before your generation or the generation even uh, after you are going to have to understand you're you're not going to be doing everything right. And you might bring in some things that we're not familiar with. You might bring in some things that we don't really even know how to cook with. But that's important for us to put into the pot because there's a point God is going to do with it. So they served it for the men to eat, but as they eat the stew, they cried out, man of God, there's death in the pot. And they couldn't eat it. But he said, bring flour. And he threw it into the pot and said, serve it for the people so that they may eat. Then there was nothing harmful in the pot. Here's what I want to say as we align our generations. There's going to be a lot of mistakes, but God already has the plan on how to deal with those mistakes. He knows that the older generation needs to back off and let things go into the pot that they wouldn't normally put into the pot, and that we need to look at some vegetables that we have never even eaten before, and we're going to have to see if they're good or if they're bad. And once they develop that stew, even if there's some mistakes made, we're going to have to know God already has the flour to purify the pot. And therefore, if we will take this attitude as we go into the season ahead, it will be very easy for us to work together, to eat together, and to walk together. My goodness. Amen. Well, sir, you're talking about food, so you know I'm already there. Uh, you know, so I, I'm a foodie, and uh, so, you know, we, we enjoy, you know, uh, eating and dining with the Lord, so that's incredible. And I mean, but I love what you shared, sir, because that is a double portion. It's around the round table. It's the seat of fellowship. It's it's at the table, face to face, having family time. And we understand Jesus and the Jewish culture is so big uh, all around food. I mean, their family all around food. And another thing, Ben, uh, Elisha didn't say, don't put those. I don't know what that is. Don't put that in the pot. He let it go into the pot. Mm. There are some of us that's willing for you guys to put some things, and you women and men that are right, being raised up now, to put some things in the pot we don't know about. And any older prophet should be willing for that to happen right now and not stop the process of what God's doing because he is creating something we've never tasted before. Oof, come on. He's creating something we've never tasted before. That is I mean, that's the new wine in a sense, and that's the recipe of revival. The, ooh, shakara. I mean, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that those who are mature will be able to discern, sense, differentiate with your palate 
what is taking place in the spirit. And, sir, I could just feel the Father's heart, you know, from the Lord through you. My goodness, it's healing. I'm sure many people watching right now, you're, you're experiencing the Father's heart as well, because that is the heart of the prophetic. That is the heart of the apostolic. That is the true heart of the prophetic. See, the prophetic just isn't speaking truth. Prophetic is expressing the mind and the heart of God. And uh, if you express his mind without his heart, you're not going mm. to end up being the true prophet that God is intending to, for you to represent here in the earth realm. Wow, so good. The mind and the heart of God. I, I, I want to, I guess, share this and, and bring it back to you, Apostle, because when 2020 happens, or even before 2020, right? Um, and in 2020, with all the nonsense that began to take place, I mean, and I, I, I love my country. I've been in 56 countries. Uh, you know, I, I've lived in Malaysia and Asia as a missionary for three years. Um, and so I have a heart for nations, for missions, for souls. And I love America. But when everything happened from 2020 and on, my, I felt so sad and discouraged to see a number of fathers, mothers, generals that I love, I respect, I honor, begin to kind of back away or back off or be more neutral or quiet and silent rather than releasing the rare word of the Lord. And it, it almost reminds me of, of the story of Eli, where his sons, Hophni and Phinehas, they're, you know, doing their thing. But then Eli's eyes began to grow dimmer and dimmer where there was no more prophetic revelation. And, you know, it almost seemed like from then to now, of course, there's a shift, a changing of the guard, massive change, and a purging even in the prophetic. But it, it kind of made me sad to see certain heroes, fathers, mothers, you know, people that we looked up to that pioneered the way, be a little bit more silent and hesitant rather than really fighting and taking this, by the hordes and saying, enough, he said, we need to stand together against all these lies and principalities. That You see that. I, I mean, you know, I don't think we get to retire at all from our, our gift. I don't think we stop using that gift until we end here on the earth realm. And then that gift should have a legacy. So in the midst of crisis is really where that gift needs to kick in. One book I wrote that I want to encourage all of you out there that depicts what started in uh, actually uh, uh, September of 2019, as we moved into 2020, is the Passover prophecies. And because, see, this decade is also uh, a Passover decade. And one of the things the Lord had shown us before the crisis with COVID came up was that he would pull us aside for a historical Passover. And never before in history had that happened. He didn't just pull aside the Jews and get them behind their door. He pulled aside all of us. And on, on that Passover of 2020, we were all behind our door. And uh, he did that to restart forming the one new man for the future. Mm. And uh, this book takes us through this decade explaining a lot of the things we're dealing with, the economic crisis ahead, what will be happening in days ahead, what, how we will have to be working uh, with government. It's got an incredible dream in it that God gave me uh, concerning China and what China would be doing. And so I want to encourage you, don't get discouraged uh, just keep moving. Don't any of you out there find those that are moving and keep moving. I, I know we probably I, I got in some trouble for keeping moving during the COVID time. But, you know, I got in trouble when I also created the web church back 16, 17 years ago and really started moving with the web church. And I had to meet before 600 leaders to discuss it. And yet, had I backed away from that, everybody had to do the web church in 2020. 
You see, you have to keep moving even though the resistance is hard. God will give you the energy and the backing, and he will affirm you at the right moment. So all you younger prophets that's out there, don't ever stop just because things get hot. Amen. And, I mean, that's a great word of exhortation, sir. I mean, keep moving. And and I've been in, you know, full-time ministry 13 years in Southern California, I mean, I was born and raised in L.A. County, and uh, me having my own background, and now, you know, just even being in California, you know, there's a great California exodus, and I know God has planted us here, and I know that we're going to see the greatest revival. This is the state of the greatest revivals on planet Earth, probably outside of Jerusalem, outside of Israel, but I know that God is is placing people in strategic places and positions to say, I'm not going to move, but we're going to see the hordes of hell and the pharaohs of Egypt release deliverance, and we're going to gain plunder from the gates of Hades. And so... For California, let me go ahead and interject that. I I told a group last week when I was speaking somewhere at a, a gathering, a large gathering, I said... Quit praying for California to fall off in the ocean. God's not going to do that. He's got a plan for it. Now, when God showed it to me in 2008, it had an evil root and a glory root. And the two roots were contending. Now, I believe you have a greater warfare in that state than many other states because of the blessing that God has ordained for you. And yet, I do pray that a remnant rise up to war until the glory root takes over that state. Amen. The gl- I, I remember you released that word with Dutch sheets at the Santa Maria Healing Room. This was 2019. Yeah. yeah. And uh, thank you for that the prophetic word of that release. But even as you're talking about the glory route, for me, what I see in the spirit, sir, is the te- tectonic plates. Yeah. There really is the tectonic plates and the earthquake. And one of the things I felt very strong in my spirit today is earthquakes. And, you know, I'm a California native. I love California. But I sense, people of God, that we need to pray against earthquakes, uh, especially for California. And let's go ahead and address that since we're working prophetically here. Yes, sir. One of the things you want to understand is the very depths, the deep portions of the earth this year began to make shifts. That's also a principle of the uh, tabernacle of David. It goes down in through five layers of the earth. The closer Mm -hmm. we get and the more we worship, the earth, the land itself is affected. Now, this year, we're going to see a lot of movement in the earth because God is dealing with deep wells. And those deep wells down deep are going to, you're going to see some uh, volcanoes arise from deep down in the ocean. Yes, You're going to see some things happen, but it's a God thing. It's a God thing because he is moving us because of our worship and seeking him into a penetration of the earth realm where iniquities dwell so he can cleanse the land. And remember, we said at the beginning, he's going to shake us so the latter glory can come out. A new level of glory can come out. So we're going to we we can endure the shaking if you understand that it's part of the will of God this year for that to happen. Wow, absolutely. And I mean, it's both bitter and sweet. It's both good and bad. It's both the mercies and the judgment of God, because in midst of the earthquake and the volcanoes erupting and in midst of the deep things, which even stand for Nephilim and and deep demonic creatures manifesting, because we're seeing darkness today like never before, as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be at the days of the Son of Man. But even in midst of that, It's the Isaiah 45 anointing where there's going to be deep hidden mysteries and treasures and gold mantles that we're going to retrieve and recover and gain. Absolutely. It's one of the ways we're going to see the new uh, supply lines uh, and the new supply roads begin to form because it's got to have a shaking so things get shaken out. Now, yes, we're in for some financial crisis, but God has already said we have a way 
to find our way into the place that we can open up these new supply lines. Amen, amen, and amen. Sir, this broadcast has been so rich and so full already. Um, before we close in prayer in a little bit, um, is there anything you want to share on your heart concerning prophetic insight intel uh, that you're sensing for this season? I know you shared about the double portion. You know, we've shared so much already. People of God, if you're blessed, say amen and give us some hearts and likes. Amen. But is there any, any last words that's just bubbling out from the Nabi anointing? One thing, one of the things this year means also when you look at it is there's a new troop arising. And that was why I, I knew that we needed to do this. There's a new troop arising, and we're going to have to learn how to work together. We've been talking about that. We've been talking about how El Elisha let the gourds go into the pot, and then it, God gave him the strategy over how to purify it so they all could eat. And so we're going to have to be working together because one of the meanings of this year is a new troop arises. Now, that means Lord Sabaoth is bringing down that heavenly, heavenly army and aligning it properly with the army here in the earth. That's us. And he's going to be calling people into place. Some of those people are not going to be mature. They're not going to know anything, but they know they're being called and they know by the spirit they need to take their stand. And this new troop becomes so important for these next four years, especially in a nation like America, to display a new prototype of alignment. So this becomes really important as we advance. And we're not just redigging wells of revival anymore. We've got to drink from that to gain strength so we can dig the new well and reform new levels of covenant with the Lord. Now, that becomes really important as you advance into this year ahead. Another thing is, this is, when you look at Gamel, it is linked also with the Philistines and Palestine. One of the reasons that we wanted to see Israel come into a right order is because there's going to be a lot of conflict between Palestine, Palestine and, uh, and the Philistines with what God is trying to do in Israel and throughout his covenant nations. Now, I also want to say I believe that the covenant nations are going to be able to be determined starting now. We're going to start really seeing what is a covenant nation and what isn't a covenant nation. You're going to find several are hanging in the balance, and yet how we make decrees in this year, in this era of pay is how entire nations will go. I declare right now God has a troop rise, raising up, being raised up throughout the nations. I see one in the Philippines. I see one in South Africa today. I see one here in America that's rising up. I see there is a new troop arising. Uh, I see certain nations that's trying to stop that movement. And their governments are trying to stop that movement. I'm concerned about Brazil right now, Venezuela, uh, Russia coming through, Cuba. There has to be a new troop arise that recreates the atmosphere of a, of a region and a territory. I decree over California where you are, Ben, right now, a new troop will arise that will carry the mind and the heart of God and recreate and cause the land to come alive again to the Lord. Whew. Amen, amen, and amen. I receive that, sir. If you receive that, say amen. I mean, sir, as you're talking about Philistines, which is modern day Palestine in a sense, it is. But when you talk about Philistines, I think about the giants because the giants in the land were Philistines. And so this is the time we're going to see giants fall. We're going to see Goliaths fall. 
We're going to see we're Jezebel. We're going to see structure that they've created over our thought processes start coming down. That's what happened. Remember, Goliath had imparted all of those words into the atmosphere for 40 days, and David walked in just to bring fruit, food to the front line, and he said, why are y'all even listening to this? We're going to learn how to overthrow that unbelief structure in our territories wow. so that we won't be Nazareth. And we won't be like in the day of Goliath, where we have bought into that the giant can rule. The Lord says, I am raising up a new troop yes. and I will impregnate an atmosphere of unbelief with faith. Mm, so good. And that is the Davidic generation. That okay. is the harp and bull. That is the sling and the stone. That is... You know, the ruddy shepherd boys, the, you know, the, the new breed. You don't have it all together. You're not perfectly polished. You, you don't have all the nice biblical language, but it's the raw anointing of God, the raw power of Jesus that's going to confront the Goliaths. And guess what? David cut the head of Goliath off. The heads are falling off. The heads are coming off. And not only that, but David gained plunder and David gained reward. So this is a season where Goliaths are falling. Giants are falling, but it takes the new troop, like Apostle Chuck Pierce said, the Davidic generation army, rambunctious, radical, raw, worshiping warriors, going after the things of God. Apostle Chuck, is there anything you want to say before he just close us off and pray? I just want to say, you can recover all, and this is a year to war for your divine recovery, and I speak that double portion over you, and I say what you couldn't see in last season, you'll see this season, and I impart the ability for you to see into a realm you've never seen before. Hallelujah. If you receive it, people of God, say amen. Listen, you need to shout it from the rooftops. Give us some hearts and likes. Share this on your wall now, sir. God bless you. Thank you, Ben. What an honor to be with you and uh, all of your staff there. I thank God for your endurance and that you press through so we could share this. Amen. It's an honor, sir. God bless you. We appreciate bless everybody. You on your trips. Bless you on your trips the next two weeks. Thank you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Everybody, let's give it up for the man of God, Apostle Chuck Pierce. Come on, someone shout hallelujah. And I want you to say divine recovery because this truly is a season of the double recovery. Someone say double recovery. My goodness, if you enjoyed this word today, I want you to give the Lord some hearts and likes. Amen. And listen, people of God, if you receive, say amen. In this moment right now, as the fire is hot, the glory is thick, the power of God is present. Come on, somebody. Someone say double recovery. Listen, in this moment, you already know we have to honor the general. We have to honor God's prophet, God's apostle. We have to honor this man of God. Friends, we want to send him a big seed. Amen. We want to sow into this word, absolutely. But we want to sow into the mantle that this general, the mantle that this apostle is. Do you receive today an upgrade of prophetic seer vision? An upgrade to recover. Hallelujah. Rakatara, did you receive today in Jesus' mighty name? If you receive, I want you to say amen. So people of God, in this moment right now, I want you to quickly get your heart ready as an act of worship and as a response saying, I am the new troop. That's going to have double recovery. I am a part of the new troop. Amen. If that's you, this word bore witness with you, this word ministered to you. Then today, I want you to sow a seed. We want to send the man of God a generous seed of honor. So to amen. So we're going to put up the ways to give right now. I want you to give. There's 260 people watching now. Give, sow, bless, connect with the word, with the anointing. And even as we're about to put up the links and the post to give, to sow, I want you to comment double recovery. Double recovery. I want you to comment double recovery. As you are sowing, if you sow, if you tap in, come on, if you believe in the word of prophets and you shall prosper, you shall succeed. Amen. I want you to comment double recovery. Hallelujah. Rekabasa. Double recovery. Glory be to God. Double recovery as you sow, as you honor, 
Praise the Lord. Shanda Redorosa. Ken. Patrice. Rachel. And I'm going to call on your name in agreement, friends. Dee Emmy. Yes. Come on, double recovery. Glory be to God. Marilyn. Shakarababa. Alicia. Glory. Glory. Come on, continue to sow, people of God. Let's honor the man of God, Apostle Chuck Pierce. Beverly, God bless you. Providence Ivana. Cynthia. Barbara. Come on. Shakarabata. Pastor Sharon. Double recovery. Double recovery. Come on. Double recovery. Karen Tom. Carlton, God bless you. Yes, come on, continue to sow. We want to bless the man of God. We want to bless the apostle, God's general, with a generous seed. Amen. So help us to do that, please. We want to bless and honor what is on his life. And as you do so, you shall receive the prophet's reward. D.C. Sandy. Reza Talabla Tatare Doroshata. Karanat. Glory be to God. Kira Babo. Gersek. Dr. Angela. Come on, people of God. So, so, so. John, God bless you. Marisala, God bless you. Vanessa, God bless you. Monica, God bless you. Double recovery. Come on. Carolyn Ward. Yes. Laura Alanis. Miriam Anderson. Sandra, oh, oh, oh. come on, double recovery. If you received from the man of God today, oh, hallelujah. There are angels in this place. Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. Angie, God bless you. Prophetess Alana, God bless you. Glory. Alvin, God bless you. Sophia, Debbie, Monica, Miriam, double on you. Carrie, yes. Our wonderful friend, I think that's Burmese. Shakaraba, Tarabata, Tarabosa, Tarabrata, Zaba, Karabrata. Hey there, Steel. Good to see you, bud. <laughs> Milagre, God bless you. Come on, double recovery. Continue to sow in this atmosphere. My goodness, were you blessed today? Did you receive today? Hallelujah. Did you feel the heart of God, the Father, from the heart of Apostle Chuck Pierce today? So much word, so much wisdom, so much impartation. Sonia, God bless you. Sherry, shalom to you. Come on, strike while the iron is hot. Sow while the glory is present. Tap in while the anointing is high. Sherry, God bless you. Come on, double recovery, double recovery. Juliana, God bless you. Rabasi Kara, you're going to end this year with miracle signs and wonders. Shandala la 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 bota. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God bless you, Juliana. Come on, continue to sow, people of God. We got 190 people, 180 plus people right now. Come on. So, release. Ho. Oh. Sandra, God bless you. Come on, we're going to keep this moment open for another two minutes. So tap in right now, people of God. Glory. Bobette, God bless you. Jennifer Farley, God bless you. Yes. Helena, God bless you. Arnett, God bless you. Shay, and look at that, people of God. Even today, I mean, yesterday we tried, and today we, this is the double take. The double portion here, Apostle Chuck Pierce is talking about the double portion. We need the double portion to see Jezebel overthrown. Oh, your sex, Sevgi. Yeah. 
Yes, Lord. Oh, na 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 ma se, sure be be be. Thank you, Mom. Tap it, press it. Joy, God bless you. Sure da 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 da. If you need breakthrough, so into this word. If you come into agreement with the man of God, let that favor come upon you. Amen. As you give a sacrificial seed, a sacrificial offering, watch God meet you with fire. Eba ba ba sata. Hedy, God bless you. Come on, comment double recovery as you sow so that we can call your name out in agreement before the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, eh. Hey. Shanda. Come on, just for another minute, just for a little bit more, people of God. There's 170 of you still watching. At least 100 more of you can give, whether it's a dollar, 50 cents. I know there may be some technical complications, but so in this moment, amen. Sheng Sheng, God bless you. Amen. See you tonight, Denise G. Amen. Jesus, Catherine Crew, God bless you. Jesus. Vicky Ikogo, God bless you. Jesus. Amen. Steve Abakan, God bless you. About Khan family. And by the way, Apostle Chuck says he loves you guys. Jesus. Oh, Rama Mama Jesus. Amen. Yes. Jesus. God bless you, Kenya F. Sullivan. Prophet Arthur, God bless you. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Good to see you, Brother Keith. Can't wait to have you here for our New Year's Eve revival. Jesus. Oh, la, 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 God bless you, child of the most high. Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. David Lakari, God bless you. Jesus. Rabba Baba Sika Rabba Basika Rama Soto Rabo Sata. Glory be to God. Now I want everybody to lift up your hands. Navi, God bless you. I want everyone to lift up your hands. Lord, I thank you. Touch your people today. Would you meet their needs? You are Jehovah Jireh. Maritha, God bless you. Would you supply and meet every need? And I thank you for the realm of supernatural provision in these days, that this is a season of not just divine recovery, but double recovery in Jesus' name. If you believe it and receive it, say amen. And give us some hearts and likes, people of God. My goodness, amen. Were you blessed today? Hallelujah. Now, friends, I want to go into some announcements here. First and foremost, thank you for joining us. And if you enjoy this page, the anointing in this ministry, I encourage you, please give us a like, give us a, a follow, subscribe, be a partner, be a friend of this world-changing ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. And of course, we're on TikTok. We are on YouTube, Instagram. So go ahead and find us on all platforms because we have different content on all platforms. Amen. Now, first and foremost, I want to talk about our next webinar. Hallelujah. The five fingers of God, which is the fivefold ministry, which is the apostolic. And in this uh, in this webinar, which is free, all of our Zoom webinars are free now. And in this webinar, we're going to talk about the fivefold ministry 
What does it mean to be an apostle, a prophet? How do you identify your gifting and your function? This, call, this is called the ascension gifts because as you ascend, the mantles and the giftings begin to increase on your life. So the five fingers of God, um, it's free. All of our webinars are free. So I want you, to, hallelujah, to go ahead and tap in. And that is going to be on November 21st. Amen. So go ahead and join, friends, if you want to be a part of our Zoom webinar on the fivefold ministry. Amen. Next, after that, I do have an, a new e-course with myself and Dr. Robert Lairdon. He is the author of God's Generals, best-selling author. And myself and Dr. Robert Lairdon, we came together with this e-course called Supernatural Prosperity. I believe even in times of famine, you will prosper. Yes, you. So if you want to learn about supernatural prosperity, go ahead and purchase, register, go ahead and get this e-course at BenlamGlobal.com. Next, I am going to Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'll be ministering in Albuquerque tonight, actually, Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, three nights in a row. So I'll be ministering in Albuquerque. So come and see us if you're in the New Mexico area. Area, If you are in Albuquerque, open heavens, New Mexico. Praise God. And the gates of hell will not prevail. Amen. Next, after that, people of God, I do have a group mentorship called 7M Glory Equip. 7M Glory Equip. And this group mentorship, I mean, I'm, these people, they are world changers, world changers in this group mentorship. And uh, when you join 7M Glory Equip, yes, you have direct access to me, but also you are in a group, a family of hungry people that are wanting to learn and go to the next level. Amen. And not only that. But we have at least two Zooms every month. You are a part of a Telegram group to build community, fellowship. It's incredible. So go ahead and join if you want to be mentored by me. I believe in discipleship. I believe in mentorship. I believe in equipping. So if you want to go to the next level, connect with a man or a woman of God. And watch things begin to take off. Amen. And last but not least, guys, we are launching our Gen Zero NFT tomorrow. Support this Christian Web3 hub. We are building the best of its kind in the Web3 space. What is Web3? Web3 is the metaverse. It is more digital interaction. And we are so excited because Glowco or Glory Coalition, this is going to change the world. Amen. Now, friends, I want you to join support Glowco Glory Coalition. Go and get your NFT. Look at that. These are seven ministers, myself, Papa Georgian Banoff, Dr. Akeem Naim Collins, Minister Natasha Hen, Prophet Jesse and Amy Shamp. These ministers, we have come together in the metaverse world so that we can build a community, educate people in the things of the future, and also release impartation of the spirit. So we are launching tomorrow, November 4th. But you right now can have early access right now. If you want to be a part of it, I want you to text the number right now, Mr. Lawrence, if we could just, just even pin the text, all right? You got to text GLOCO, amen? So you watch it right now. Text us if you want to support this Christian Web3 project. We want to be the best and the first of its kind, and we are the first of its kind already, but we want to be the best, amen? 
Rababa Sota Raba. So we're going to put in the number for you to text it. Text us. And we'll get back to you on how you can get involved. Do you want to be involved with Gloco? Do you want to be involved? Hallelujah. Philippians says, I already bought my NFT. God bless you. Yeah, Gloco Glory Coalition, we are endeavoring to build our own metaverse, our own game, our own token cryptocurrency. But first, we're launching our NFTs of Christian ministers, of these anointed prophets and apostles of God. Amen. So we're going to post the number for you to text. Hallelujah. Because we want you to text us. We want you to stay connected with us. Amen. Yes, you do, Prophet Zivana. Kara brota tabata. Yeah, buy and purchase it. Before it gets sold out for a limited time, because one of the blessings of being a part of the early access, the early crew, is that it's at a better price. Amen. You don't want to miss out on this, friends. I believe Mr. Lawrence is still working on the number here. Praise God. Oh, there it is. If you want to be a part of this, text GLOCO to 855-494-1797. All of you watching, 129, all of you watching right now, text GLOCO to 855-494-1797. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wow. Such a rich and glorious time. Wow. Now, friends, I want you to lift up your hands. Thank you, Father, that all that was done today will be sealed in the name and in the blood of Yeshua. Let your will be done in this month of November of Sheshvan, the season of the outpouring of the latter rain, the glory rain, and the abundance of supply and provision. Let the word of God come to pass in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord a mighty clap. Hallelujah. Well, people of God, this is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim. We did it. Thanks for joining us for this episode, I guess, of Prophetic Convergence, where God is raising up a new breed of prophets and apostles. And there is a divine synergy and convergence of family being knit together. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost. The baby in my spirit is sleeping. Hallelujah. Uska Get ready for the shofar blast of breakthrough to resound in your life and in the nation. Amen. God bless you, friends. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lin. I can't wait to see you soon. Shalom.